Hello, my name is Marianne Littlejohn, and I'd like to talk to you today about home birth, an introduction to home birth, and uh, how to set it up. Home birth, uh, I just want to read this quote from Michel Odom because this is uh, a good introduction in itself. When you are in hard labor, remember that the length of the labor is usually proportional to the number of people around. Avoid the presence of anybody who might release adrenaline. The best situation for an easy birth is when there is no one else around other than an experienced motherly and silent midwife who does not behave like a guide or an observer. This is a quote from Dr. Michel Audin, who is an advocate for women and midwives alike, and has written many books on home birth, well, on uh, physiological birth, actually, not particularly home birth. He doesn't uh, particularly say where one should give birth, but I happen to be a home, mid home birth midwife, and I've just prepared a little introduction for you today to help you make up your mind about where you want to give birth. The first thing we're going to talk about is criteria for a home birth. So they say that a healthy, low-risk woman is the best uh, candidate for a home birth with no pre-existing health conditions like heart disease or diabetes or high blood pressure and no developing, exist, no developing conditions in the pregnancy, such as preeclampsia, which is a liver disease, and uh, high blood pressure or diabetes of pregnancy. Or, for instance, uh, very premature labor, and uh, there is some uh, contention about breach and twins. I haven't ever attended a home birth breach, although I have attended breach births in hospital, um, and twin births I have attended at home. And really it was the choice of the mother to, uh, to give birth at home with twins, and the risks are a little bit higher, but she was prepared to take those risks. So the reasons women uh, seek a home birth are numerous and uh, one of them is that women have had a, a traumatic birth prior to seeking a home birth and they want a different kind of experience. So sometimes women have been in hospital and perhaps they were induced or they had a very traumatic forceps or a, a, a vacuum birth and they want to avoid uh, giving birth that way second time around. Some women were separated from their children, their babies at birth. Uh, sometimes they're separated from their children and that was traumatic. And sometimes uh, it's because a woman can have a relationship with the midwife and she has the same midwife throughout the pregnancy looking after her and then the same midwife or perhaps two midwives caring for her during the labor and the birth and, and then the relationship with the midwife who uh, continues that care up to six weeks after the birth of the baby. Uh, women want to reduce unnecessary exposure to intervention, which often happens in a hospital. And just referring back to what Dr. Michelle Audin has said here, that when we go into hospital, we're moving out of an environment where we feel safe in our homes, and we move into an environment where uh, the lights are bright, there are many people around us that we don't know. Uh, there's a very uh, clinical and uh, perhaps angry looking bed waiting for us to climb on it. Uh, there's no softness. There's, um, there's no warmth in the environment. And 
um, that understandably produces adrenaline and that adrenaline will slow down a labor. So what one finds is that when women go into labor and they go into hospital quite early in the labor, the labor will slow down because adrenaline has been produced, she's in a strange environment, and that suppresses the production of oxytocin and melatonin, which are, pre, which are the hormones that um, get labor going. Um, there's a culture of independence also, uh, and uh, some women are uh, leading an alternative lifestyle and a natural lifestyle, and they want to just follow uh, that natural way um, and give birth at home. And then, of course, uh, to protect breastfeeding and no separation of the baby from the mother after birth. And... Uh, at a home birth, you keep your baby with you. No one is going to separate the baby unless, of course, there is a problem and the baby needs resuscitation or the baby needs to be transferred to hospital. That is very rare. Um, and breastfeeding is not interfered with. The baby stays on your chest from the moment of birth and then is free to seek for the breast and to latch on when he or she is ready. So what are the risks of home birth? Uh, the risks, several research studies point towards home birth being as safe as hospital birth when it is planned with a qualified midwife in attendance or a, or a very experienced birth attendant, traditional midwife, also um, uh, uh, makes the birth safer than if you're birthing uh, alone and on your own. Uh, there are three main reasons for transfer to a hospital in the home birth situation. The one is that the labor may not progress over uh, uh, several hours, um, maybe over three days and the labor doesn't progress and then it's recommended that the mother be uh, transferred to hospital for further assistance and if after the birth uh, sometimes babies are born and they have an infection sometimes uh, they are stressed and need resuscitating and in those cases uh, it's important to transfer the baby to a neonatal unit where the baby can receive uh, appropriate care for whatever it is that he is suffering from. Uh, and the third reason is that uh, a mother may hemorrhage or bleed after the birth and most times this can be managed effectively in the home, but sometimes it can't. Sometimes there are pieces of the placenta that remain in the womb and those might need to be removed, or uh, there is an area of, of, um, uh, of the cervix that is damaged and that will bleed continually. And then the mother will need to be transferred to the hospital for further assistance in a clinically medical environment. The transfer rate to uh, hospital is relatively low and the outcomes are good, as good as the outcomes when mothers and babies give birth and are born in hospital. These are based on research studies that have been done in Canada and in the UK. We have yet to do one here in South Africa. And the benefits of home birth are less risk of intervention, for instance, epidurals, uh, episiotomy, or uh, unnecessary surgery. So it, it must be said that the rate of, of surgical intervention in home births is much less than the rate of surgical intervention in the hospital, which suggests that just because a woman goes into a hospital, she is then at risk of a higher surgical interference. There's a less risk of tearing, so the perineum, when the baby is born, may tear, but in a home birth, there's less risk of tearing. 
uh, there's less risk of a traumatic experience and her emotional well-being is protected in her home environment and protected by the midwife who is present with her. And then uh, there is less risk of separation and breastfeeding difficulties. Breastfeeding difficulties are associated with the incidence of epidurals and pain relief and surgical birth. So breastfeeding difficulties are minimized in the home birth environment. Good outcomes. There are good outcomes with home birth. A uh, healthy mom gives birth to a healthy baby. And it's important to recognize that the basic needs of a woman in labor are met in a home birth. And those basic needs are that uh, a woman can um, induce semi-darkness in her own home. She can create a semi-darkness in her room by closing the curtains or at night by lighting candles. Uh, she can keep herself warm with her own covers by putting on heating, by having a fire burning. She's private. Uh, privacy is a big prerequisite. She's not being watched and she's not on a time scale. She's not being hurried. She can just rest in her body and rest in the progress of her labor. And labor may not be consistent. It may not progress consistently. It may progress for a while and then it may stop and she may rest. And then a few hours later, it may continue. And she's then got a, a soft bed to rest in when she needs to rest and when things uh perk up again and labor continues, then she's in her own home. Uh, she has a skilled person who sits quietly in the corner and uh, doesn't observe her or guide her, and that reassures her and makes her feel safe. And uh, the uh, another re prerequisite for a, uh, a, a basic need in labor is to be silent. So not to have lots of people around and not to use language which which engages the brain which engages the thinking part of the brain and actually we need to switch the thinking part of the brain off and sink into our bodies and that there is no adrenaline in the environment so no anxious people no people who are going to bring adrenaline into the environment and bring anxiety because we are we are herd creatures and if one person is anxious that anxiety is often picked up by the other people in the room so it's a good idea to keep uh, the number of people in, in in your birth situation in your in your home birth to a minimum and uh, then we need to just uh, thought we would talk about how to prepare your space in a home birth. So it's, it's a, a creative place and you can create an environment that makes you feel peaceful and happy and calm. And you can also continue to work until you feel you need to stop. You can clean the kitchen, you can prepare the baby's room, you can dig in the garden. It's your space. So old sheets, it's good to have some old sheets handy and a pile of at least 10 towels. And I like to recommend incontinent sheets just because uh, it's so easy to fold them up and put them in the, the bin when they've been used. Uh, maternity pads, you can make your own with cloth or you can get some large disposable maternity pads and you need several packets of those for after the birth. Uh, comfortable underwear, some comfortable clothes to wear during labor and afterwards to keep you warm and and feel, make you feel comfortable as well. You need receiving blankets for the baby and some nappies for the baby and those can be cloth nappies. Uh, and uh, and uh, I would recommend the eco-friendly disposable nappies if you're going to use disposable nappies. And then uh, work out what music you would like to have with you. Uh, make a playlist of music that makes you feel calm and uh, happy and restful. Aromatherapy oils. I like to recommend lavender, clary sage, chamomile, and oregano. Oregano is a very good antiseptic oil to have in your house. You need to keep hydrated, so having some coconut uh, water, uh, 
um, some mineral water um, available for you to to drink whenever you feel thirsty and of course a warm bed uh, to rest in some good breathing techniques visualization techniques some affirmations and some meditation techniques as well as yoga techniques and in future videos i will go into these in more detail in how to prepare for a home birth uh, there are four parts to labor um, i like to talk about the early part of labor which is the first part and uh, the first part of labor, you can carry on with your normal life and or you can rest. Uh, this is recommended in the early part of the labor. And then the active part of the labor is a part of labor where you may want to walk around and be more active or kneel or stand, lie on your side. Uh, often women will lie down and then it, when the surge comes, and they feel some discomfort and some pain, they will stand up or they will get up and then in between they will lie down again. It's good to have water around. Uh, you don't need to hire a bath. You can use your ordinary bath or a shower. And uh, I've often gone to births where uh, the babies have been born in the shower or the babies have been born just in the ordinary bath because the mothers felt so comfortable there and, and didn't want to get out. Now, the, set, the third part of the birth is the expulsion part. And this is what we call the fetus ejection reflex, where you get an uncontrollable urge to, uh, to give birth. And you can't stop it. It's, it's a body mechanism. Your body takes over. And the last thing you need to be is, is in your mind. And you need to be completely uninhibited and comfortable to make utterances, to go to the bathroom, and to expel this baby that you've been holding inside. And then the, the last part of the labor is the placenta, uh, the expulsion of the placenta. And it's a similar feeling to giving birth uh, to the baby, although it doesn't sting quite as much. And then uh, the baby moon. It's just so wonderful to have a baby moon in your own home, not to have to transfer back home from a hospital. And I recommend keeping visitors to visiting hours at home as well. Otherwise, your home is just continually filled with people coming and going. Uh, keep the baby close to your skin so that you can bond and the baby can attach to you. You can breastfeed in your bed. And I recommend that you don't get out of bed for six weeks. I mean, this is a baby moon. And after you get out of bed, it's busy. So rest, nourishment, and uh, if you need help in the house, get help. That's all from me. This is my introduction to home birth for you. And uh, I just want to end with another quote from Michel Audin. He says, people never sing except in the bathroom. And uh, this is true of both women and men. Birthing women also make their natural sounds next to running bath water. There is something about the power of water People are drawn to water, baths, sacred streams. Women in labour are drawn to water too. Women need to try to find the right position for her own needs and comfort in labour. In our society, we think of birthing as something done while lying down. And in a home birth, this is certainly not going to be the case. So that's all from me for today. All the best. And I hope this will help you make your choices. Thank you. Bye-bye.